I started uh, studying uh, cello and music at all um, quite late with 12. Uh, so um, I had to work very, very quick to achieve a certain level. Uh, but actually the cello came into my life um, not because I, I, I heard some cellos before or I loved the, the, the instrument or the sound of the instrument, but because my sister... Uh, already played the piano by that time and she recommended the cello to me so it could have been uh, tuba or oboe or something else but actually I'm now uh, very thankful to her uh, because it's uh, the best instrument in the world and quite soon uh, maybe a few months later uh, latest a few years later I already realized that it would be the, the perfect instrument for me uh, and I'm, I'm very glad I, I'm a cellist uh, conducting came much later into my life, um, actually only like about six years ago. Um, actually, um, almost as a coincidence, uh, at least it, it was not planned. And uh, But as I had the first uh, chance to, to conduct uh, in, a, in a serious situation, um, I already discovered uh, something very, very special for me and... Uh, I got more and more curious and, and um, it's developing very well, um, this side of my, of my activity, of my career. And actually it's a kind of a compliment to, to the cello because, uh, um, of course, conducting you can achieve uh, many things and uh, different from, from the cello playing. But also cello playing, as, as we have the, 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 the luck of, of being able to produce sound, which a conductor is not directly. So um, I find it very interesting to, to have this, this balance in my life and uh, presently this is really a perfect situation that I can combine both things, uh, cello playing and conducting. Well, I think nowadays there is no secret. I mean, you have to have the talent, um, but you also have to work a lot. Uh, that doesn't really mean um, to work, to, to, to practice uh, six, eight, ten hours a day. Maybe sometimes two hours are enough. But that the time you, you, you invest practicing, that it's really uh, with concentration and with focus and that you practice well and are really aware of what you're doing, what you're learning. Um, it's more important than to just uh, put an alarm clock and, and say, okay, today I practice eight hours, so I for sure I got better. I, I don't think that that works as good as, as uh, very focused and uh, responsible uh, practicing time. Uh, and of course, you have to be surrounded by, by good teachers. Uh, I had a lot to have very good teachers from the very beginning, uh, not only cello teachers, but also chamber music, uh, orchestra, music theory, whatever. Uh, that's of course very important because you have to be also not only taught but also motivated and, and inspired and that's not very easy to find uh, persons that that can that are able to 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 uh, give you all these all these factors but um, i think that that that's very important to have a very good teacher and uh, to be surrounded by the by the right people also the right colleagues because if you if you make chamber music with um, with people that are also aiming to achieve the same goals as you are and uh, make music as motivated as you are, uh, the work will be much better and you will learn a lot. And sometimes I, there were certain um, parts of my, of my um, study uh, time that I learned even more by, by rehearsing a lot of a string quartet than to uh, practice for myself alone. So it's, it's really important to, to make a lot of things, to be flexible and to be um, um, aiming to, to, to learn a lot. Yes, uh, the recording was uh, got this this award. It was really nice because, um, I mean, uh, CD being chosen the best of of 2016, voted by hundreds of people around the world, uh, more than 65 countries, I think. Uh, it's it's really amazing, especially because it was a CD or it is a CD uh, completely dedicated to to Portuguese music, which is uh, quite unknown. 
uh, even in Portugal sometimes. So um, it was not a recording with, with Bach suites or Dvorak cello concerto or whatever. So it was really, uh, um, really very, very nice uh, award for us, for everyone who, who took part in this, in this project. And I always had this, this uh, kind of uh, tendency of, of, of promoting Portuguese music. Well, I'm Portuguese, of course. And I uh, went to live abroad uh, to Germany quite soon when I was 18. And um, because I always had a feeling that Portuguese music uh, was, uh, was kind of forgotten, um, uh, I, I always had this obligation for myself of, of promoting it, of playing it and showing it. Not as a, uh, I said this already many times as a patriotic uh, motivation, but because uh, there is really very, very good music, very interesting music uh, that people just don't know around the world. And um, I got that, that for me as a kind of mission uh, to, um, to play as much Portuguese or conduct as much Portuguese music as I can. Uh, because there are really very, very good things and people should know it. And I'm sure when people uh, uh, get to know it, people start loving it as well and start playing it as well. And I have the, the proof for that because it happened to me already many times that people come to me and say, I heard your CD or I, I, I heard your performance and I want to play this sonata or I want to conduct this symphony. Please, uh, how can I get the score? So it's, it's, uh, that's, that's the point. And I think Portuguese music deserves it. I mean, with the cello, there is no um, special uh, reason that the cello should uh, be able to play Portuguese uh, music more than all instruments, of course not. I mean, there is very nice repertoire for cello, that's, that's true. Uh, um, I recall already not only this, this uh, last CD with, with works for cello and orchestra, but also before a double CD with works for cello and piano and cello alone. And there are a lot of uh, there is lots of good music, and um, of course it's for me also a privilege and an honor to be um, to uh, to work as an ambassador of my of my own country of the music of my own country, and the feedback has been uh, the best as possible. Well, to have a good instrument is obviously very important. Um, if you are a performer uh, which uh, plays, for example, a lot uh, as a soloist or orchestra, it's important to have a, a cello with uh, big volume so that you can survive in a, in a big concert hall with an orchestra behind you with works that sometimes are also very unfairly written by the composers because uh, they are for a for very big set of instruments behind the, the, the solo cello. Um, for chamber music, you probably don't know the don't need a, a, an instrument with uh, with a, with the biggest volume, but it's important to have a good instrument that has a good resonance, overtones, and uh, that has a kind of sound that also matches the other instruments and is easy to to uh, is flexible to um, to match the, the the sound and to to create a, a unique sound among uh, all the colleagues. So, um, of course, and a very good instrument is very important. We know all these all these uh, experiments uh, with uh, very no, very well known uh, instruments, very expensive instruments that even lose against the, the new instruments. That's very interesting, and shows uh, that um, at least until a certain point, um, it is exaggerated. The, the, the for example, the price for this for this very uh, expensive and old instruments. I mean, nowadays you have uh, very, very, very good uh, um, instrument makers. Uh, and it's, um, by the way, a very, very personal thing to, to, to decide which instrument is the best. Because the, the, an instrument that can be, for me, uh, the best of the world, uh, for, the, for the cellist next to me, it doesn't say anything to him. So it's also a very personal thing. Um, but of course, to, to, to have a, a good instrument is, is like a, almost a must, uh, even if a quality of an instrumentalist um, can also be seen with a, with, a, with a bad instrument, actually. You also see, oh, that's a very good cellist or violinist or viol violist, but it doesn't have a good instrument. Okay, that's obvious, yeah. But I mean, if you want to make a career um, at, at, at a certain point, you have to, to have a good instrument 
to really can go forward on your, on your path. The first instrument I had from Luis Amorim, um, I bought it in 2009. Uh, I was in Curitiba uh, teaching in a, a master class and playing some cello music concerts. And I met him almost by coincidence and um, he showed me the cello and I, I, I liked it very much and I already bought it. And then the second one, uh, that was a Montagnana model, by the way, Sleeping Beauty. And uh, in 2014, I was in Brazil again, and uh, Luis had two cellos uh, ready. And we were actually more in contact because one of them, uh, which was also a Montagnana model, um, and, but I got to uh, like better the other one, was, was a Gofrila model, so a kind of a, uh, with an with a even bigger corpus. Um, so I bought that one too. <laughs> And uh, latest in 2017, uh, Luis was here in Germany and brought me this cello, which is a Rogeri model, and I fell in love again. And uh, yes, so that's the, this is now the third instrument I have from Luis, and I, I must say I was always very happy with all of them. And um, maybe uh, the fact that I, I already had a chance to play on a, on a really uh, on a real Montagnana. Uh, it, it really uh, surprised me how the, how the, for example, the first chill I had from, from Luis, the Montagnana model, was so similar in the, in the, in the type of sound. Um, it's also it's, it's different, difficult to explain somehow. Uh, you have to, to feel it, to, to listen to it. Uh, but uh, I was like in shock how the, that cello was so similar and uh, sounded so well. So I already bought it, and since then I was in, in, in contact with Luis, and I must say I'm already afraid that uh, we meet again soon, and he has a cello in his hand, because I might have to, to buy the fourth one. Well, the first time we met was in 2009. Uh, I was in Curitiba in Brazil, uh, teaching in a master class and playing uh, some champion music concerts. And uh, Luis came to me with a cello, with a Montagnana model by that time, and uh, I liked it very, very much. I didn't know uh, Luis until then, uh, but I was really, really uh, surprised and uh, very impressed with his, with his great work. And since then, we were, of course, in touch, and I heard already from other instruments that he built, and also some bows. Uh, it happened even to me that once where I was talking with a friend, a violist, and uh, he told me I have a, a bow from Brazil. Ah, oh, funny, I also have a cello from Brazil. And then we, we, <laughs> we discovered that both uh, the, my, my cello and his bow uh, were from Luis, by Luis. And um, it's funny because I think his reputation is, is, is uh, going higher and higher and I'm very happy for it. And it's, uh, I, I already knew it because I knew the instruments were great. But also, I'm I'm very happy to see that um, to see more and more instruments from from Luis and both from Luis around me, and it's it's really nice. And I, I I'm sure in the future there will be more and more. Until now, I always play the cellos uh, by Luis as a main instrument. Uh, two exceptions were that I had two different chances to play. Once uh, uh, I played on a on a Montagnana, the Montagnana Sugia where I played the six bass suites um, and then uh, later I played on a Stradivari, the king of Portugal. Um, I played all the sonatas and uh, variations by Beethoven. Otherwise, I always played the cellos by, by Luis and um, it's, really, it's really amazing because they are really uh, very good instruments which fit to the also, also different situations I have, uh, chamber music or solo or orchestra. Uh, so it's uh, it's really nice to to have these instruments, and I'm very happy with them.